Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will vlog daily from my country Ukraine since the start of this awful war with Russia. And in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our background and our history. And today I want to speak about men or actually about an unusual type of men and luckily unusual type of men that are dictators. Uh, what made me think of this topic for my vlog? Well, the announcement that Kim Chen In, the leader of the totalitarian and awful state North Korea, decided to demonstrate his total support to President Putin. I do think sometimes when you even have a normal cause and an issue and somebody weird or bad supports you, you start having doubts. Is it something normal that I am doing or maybe I have made the wrong choice? So uh, for all the civilized world, of course, the support of Kim Chen In is a sign that something goes totally wrong. I was interested in the topic of North Korea before the war and I loved reading some news or watching the films documentaries or on uh, Discovery or some National Geographic, by the way, I'm a fan of this type of channels. And I was always fascinated at how can this really exist, how this level of totalitarianism is ever possible, how people can look and accept this kind of leader, this kind of life. And I do know there are people who try to be rebellious or to, who escape to South Korea, for example, but still, you can read the news and lots of Korean, North Korean news are dedicated, for example, to um, the escalation or something of Kim Chen In to the top of some mountain on a horse. And this is described as the top event of the last decade or something. Look at his style. Once again, I'm not into appearance because for me, I do like um, the one phrase of Socrates. And I often use it with my students, speak to me so I could see you. I do believe that people become beautiful or handsome when they speak, when you see their actions, but definitely the way we use our body, the way we use our nonverbal behavior, the way uh, we act influences and make us more or less beautiful. And when you look at Kim Chen In, you don't have doubts, he looks weird. And uh, the fact that people, when you watch the news and you see them cry when something bad happens to their leaders, and I know something similar happened in Soviet Union when uh, Stalin died and lots of people perhaps died of sadness. And I always have this question, is it that they fake these emotions to survive or are these emotions true? And the more I observe modern day Russia, which is an example of a totalitarian society too, maybe not yet that radical as North Korea, but they are moving very quickly in that direction. And I start to think that no, they don't fake for survival, but something, uh, it's an epidemic that spreads really quickly and something happens to their brain. And the majority of people honestly express this kind of exp uh, emotions and this kind of dependencies on their leaders. And then when you look at the majority of these dictators, I don't know why, maybe because I come from normal family, normal country, normal culture, I mean, uh, democratic or a one that tends to be democratic. When I look at these dictators, they always seem funny to me. I know they are not funny guys in reality because they kill millions of people. And Putin, for example, is the reason of true tragedies, daily tragedies in Ukraine, but at the same time, they do look funny when you look at them. And I know that uh, a film of Charlie Chaplin was extremely important during the fight in the Second World War when he mocked Hitler. And in Ukraine, we also often repeat that when you start laughing at your problem, when you start laughing at the dictator, uh, you become stronger. And I do believe that laughter and understanding of how funny in this negative uh, point, uh, in this negative meaning of this world, they are, uh, you become stronger. And you don't have to be into, I don't know, image making or something. But when you look at Putin, who wears platforms to become taller, it's not important how tall you are. It does not measure your level of coolness. And when you believe that your heights are important, then something wrong happens with your behavior, uh, with your uh, like self-esteem. Also, uh, he definitely uses 
plastic surgery once again it's okay people really need it but he became this victim of a plastic surgery or maybe that is the result of some medications that he takes but his face is totally different and his cheekbones are really plump and high and that is really visible and he is very much into that soviet style of costumes and at the same time he wants to look like a macho and there are lots of there were lots of his photos i don't know if you can say it about men topless but come on it is definitely better without these photos because he does not look that appropriate making these photos and he's not a model for i don't know shaving lotion or something and it all looks really funny when you look at and analyze his efforts to look macho style and he's not a macho and perhaps he should have chosen different ways to look attractive or interesting to his society then also if you look at um, lavrov right he is weird in the way he behaves, he is very rude, he is definitely not an example of a diplomat and he always speaks about Rotten West when all of his family, all of his children, even his stepchildren, they all live in Europe and I have this question to European, to, to Russian citizens, is it okay for you? Don't you have any like, okay, you see so many flaws in Ukrainian society, but do you see flaws in your government, in your society? Have you tried correcting them? Have you tried cleaning your house? And also Lukashenko. Lukashenko looks also really funny with his moustache, with his hairdo. He was working really hard to hide uh, some problems with his hair. And once again, it's totally okay to accept the way you look and to start acting naturally, not hiding something, but accepting something. And there are lots of people who have these problems and they are still attractive men. Look at Hollywood actors and so on. So I do think that one thing that unites all dictators is that sooner or later, they start looking very funny. They start acting funny because they believe in their own image and people who are either ill uh, because of this influence or they are terrified and they are under influence of this totalitarian machine pressure and suppressions i'm sorry for the sounds i live close to a supermarket and he has lots of drawbacks too so all these dictators uh, supported by this audiences that are always afraid of them and never share their true opinions all these dictators start believing that they are the best men on the planet, that they will never die, uh, that they have these historic roles like Putin is, uh, Peter the Great, and even Peter the Great was not great. And I do think that one of the faults, one of the greatest guilts is not only the diagnosis or difficult childhood or I don't know, work in the KGB and FSB in case with Putin, but one of the flaws and faults lies on the citizens, on people who start supporting uh, this myth. Uh, something similar often happens in offices when people are very subordinate to their bosses and they are afraid to criticize even normal things. I don't have you to you have to criticize the style of your boss, but you don't have to be always positive. Personally, I'm never. I always I will always compliment things that I really like in a person, but if there is something I don't like, I will never lie and say that well, you're a good singer if you're not. I will try to find something I really like in you and then I will compliment them. Uh, and uh, what I see in this totalitarian state at the very beginning, uh, leaders, because of their strengths or because of totalitarian machine, various special services, I don't know, or perhaps also national character and mentality, they manage to suppress people and they start supporting everything and every stupid idea becomes totally normal. Like Stalin at the end of his life started writing lots of books on linguistics. I can tell you a little bit about that if you're interested because I'm a linguist and I know some facts about that, but it definitely shows something went wrong. When a person who does not have education, who does not have time to dip into linguistic, writes huge books about the future of Soviet languages. And people support that, people read that, people learn that, and nobody stops them and says, well, you're a cool guy, but there are areas that you're not professional in. And I do think that's why Russians 
are also guilty for the fact that they nourished and nurtured Putin as their dictator. And now when he looks really funny for the civilized part of the world, with his style, with his behavior, with his vision of history and with his vision of future, they continue believing that he is a strong leader. And uh, people like Macron and other also see that picture and somehow help to support that picture, to save the face that is not worth saving, to save the face that has fallen down long ago. And now we see a terrified man hiding in bunker and wanting to spoil and ruin the world, starting from Ukraine, but not finishing in Ukraine. So anyway, I do think that it is important to warn people when we see these first signs that they can be dictators, whether in politics or in the office. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for buying me coffee, becoming my patrons. But most importantly, thank you for your subscriptions because it is really important for me to keep you updated on the situation in Ukraine as we are fighting this war and we must win this war. Slava Ukraini!